So you want to live in the Cayman Islands, huh? Well, let me take you grocery shopping first. Less, which is sort of like Cayman's knockoff version of Costco. Um, so just to give you an idea of some bigger items, some more like bulk style items that they carry there, uh, there are some price comparisons from there. Now we're going to head over to Foster's, which is more like a regular supermarket, and compare some prices there as well. Here we go! From our little shopping trip. Now, at this point, you may be asking yourself, what makes groceries so expensive in Cayman? And today, that's exactly what I want to talk about. Actually, more than that, I want to talk about the overall cost of living in Cayman. Because over this past week, there's been a lot of conversation around this topic here on the island, given that two different reports have come out within the past week, putting Cayman at the top of the list of most expensive countries in the world in which you can live. So, Welcome to paradise, it's gonna cost you. <laughs> I've got my laptop here, so some of what we're discussing I'm actually gonna show you in real time. Um, okay. All right, so here we go. I have two different sources that I want us to look at. I have my laptop out here and I'm gonna be screen recording so that you guys can see what I'm looking at as we discuss. So the first report that I wanna look at comes from Cayman Compass. This is one of our newspapers. Also, obviously they have a website and here they have cited a source from Expatistan, which is obviously a resource for expats, so you can compare places that you want to move. So let's look at, for example, in my case, Cayman versus Canada. All right, so Cayman is 49% more expensive for food, 103% more expensive for housing, 71% more for clothes, 50% more for transportation, 58 personal care, 59% for entertainment, a total of 68% more expensive in general. Obviously the exchange rate you want is something you want to take into consideration, um, but also keep not only the exchange rate but your pay rate in mind. So even though, let's say you're making $40,000 in Canada and you get a job offer for $40,000 a year down here in the Cayman Islands, um, obviously you're going to be paying your cost of living down here while you're living and working down here. So you're gonna have to consider that groceries is gonna cost you 49% more. Even though, yes, you're not paying maybe 20, 30% in tax, you're paying 49% more for your groceries. You're paying 103% more potentially for your rent or whatever. 71% more for groceries, 50% more for transportation, 58%, you get it, right? Like, I don't stop needing tampons just because I moved to Cayman. They just cost me more here. So even though I may be trying to make more in CI dollars because obviously our Canadian dollars like monopoly money right now, that transfer rate doesn't help me when I'm paying my monthly expenses just to stay alive down here. So just keep in mind, you may not save as much as you think you're going to save once you actually look at what the cost of living is going to cost you on a month to month basis. So yes, if I'm living in Canada, I want to account for taxes, but if I'm living down here, I want to account for cost of living. So in some jobs, yes, it may make a lot of sense to move down here and work down here and save a lot of money. But in some situations, it may actually lose you money in the end. So is 
for you, is that compromise worth it to make less money at the end of the day or to take home less money, let's say, after your expenses um, in order to live in paradise? Maybe it is. Everybody's different. Maybe for you, you'd, you don't mind paying 103% more for your rent because you get to live, you know, five minute walk from the beach. So all about your priorities, but um, this video is just to bring to light the actual cost of living down here. So let's look at this little chart here. Just to give you an idea, Cayman is more expensive than Hong Kong, Switzerland, Iceland, and Norway when you consider things like you know, your average things that people buy, internet service, dinner out, brand name shoes, potatoes, <laughs> toothpaste. Um, and then when you look at cities, they do still consider Grand Cayman a city because our population here is smaller than most cities. Um, but it, even when you look at it as a city, it still tops the list. It's more expensive than Zurich, New York, Geneva, and San Francisco. And I know when you talk about the US, New York, and San Francisco are usually some of the top two that come up as far as most expensive places to live. So if you're thinking about moving from New York to Cayman, will it be worth it? I don't know. See what kind of job offer you get, how much money they offer you. Maybe it is worth it once you even take into account cost of living. Maybe it's more expensive, but for you it's still worth it so you don't have to live through another New York winter. Totally up to you. All right, so let's read a little bit of this article. So it says, forget Tokyo, forget New York, forget San Francisco, and even Hong Kong. When it comes to expensive places to live, look no further than the ground beneath your feet. Now keep in mind, this is a Caymanian newspaper, so. According to the most recent worldwide ranking by Expatistan, Grand Cayman is the most costly place to live on the planet. This website is designed to provide information on the cost of living for those living or planning to live in foreign countries, puts Grand Cayman at the top of its list of 104 countries, as well as first among 318 ranked cities. So it says a Cayman has been near the top of the rankings for a long time. Yeah, it kind of goes into more detail. I don't want to spend too much time reading out an entire article for you guys. I think this gets the point across. Um, but what I will do is I'll link this article in the description so you can check out the details if you want to. I'll also link the Expatistan website so you can go and compare to your city. Um, for example, Grand Cayman versus Miami. This is where my boyfriend lives. This is where today's grocery comparisons came from. So thank you, Fred, who went to his local Walmart in Miami and got some comparison prices, uh, those pictures that I used in the video, to compare the cost of food from Walmart versus our grocery stores down here. Because when he first came down here and really spent some time visiting me and like we went grocery shopping together and stuff, he had some serious sticker shock in the grocery store. I had a really good laugh at it and that's when I actually decided to make this video. So the timing just kind of works out that these articles uh, these reports and studies and whatever came out around the same week that I was planning to do this video But yeah, it's something I've been considering doing for a while now. Okay, let's look at one more website that does similar type of comparison So this is cost of living index per country 2019 mid-year by Noom Bale um, This is another site that does a lot of collecting of data and comparing different cities and countries and whatnot And you can compare different things So right now we're just looking at the general cost of living index and as you can see they rank Cayman as number one so their cost of living index is 141.64. How they calculate that, I'm not gonna go into the details in this video. Again, I'm gonna link these resources down below so you can look into it for yourself. But yeah, you can see Cayman in general, cost of living is quite a few points higher than even number two, Bermuda. And Bermuda is even a fair few points higher than number three, Switzerland. So let's look for some big countries, some places that you guys might be watching from. I know I have quite a few viewers in the US. They're down here at number 25. 70.95 Canada where I came from and pulling it in at 68.16 um, I don't know if anybody's watching from the UK you guys are even further down the list at 65.33 so the lower the number the cheaper it is to live in that particular country now in some places that might even be a bad thing like um, you look at places that have a lot of violence, you know, Afghanistan, Pakistan, they're near the bottom. So you don't necessarily want to be in a city that's at the very bottom either because that could be an indicator of an unhealthy economy. But uh, in some cases it's not. I mean, some places down here could be really nice to live. I don't know that much about all of these countries, so <laughs> leave me a comment and let me know if you live in one of these countries at the bottom of the list. Do you like living there? Is it worth a low cost of living? Let us know what you think. Now, keep in mind on this website, Numbeo, you can also look at other things. For example, you can look at crime statistics. You can pick country, Cayman Islands. And you can see that they're fairly low on the crime scale, 27.82, not bad at all. Uh, you can actually then compare that to, let's see, 
United States, eh, considerably higher. So again, higher cost of living, higher safety. There are trade-offs to everything. And that's really the point that I wanted to make in this video. There's a reason why our cost of living is high. Obviously, in the case of groceries, you have to ship a lot of things in. We have a very small island, therefore small agriculture, therefore not enough fruits and vegetables being grown on this island to feed everybody. I think there are ways in the future perhaps to improve upon our numbers in that area, but for now we do ship the majority of things in, so you have to keep in mind that when you're paying for those groceries, when you're paying for that package of strawberries, that came from another country and it had to be shipped in in a refrigerated container and it probably cost a lot of money to bring it in, so you kind of eat the cost of that in what you pay for your groceries as the end consumer. So yeah, there's a reason for all of this, but I just wanted to show you guys the actual cost of living situation down here. I have a lot of comments asking me, you know, what can I make coming down as an accountant? Is it worth it for me to make this kind of move? And that's really not a decision that I can make for you. In my opinion, in certain industries, especially in the service level, the pay here is not nearly high enough to sustain this kind of cost of living. I actually get really fired up <laughs> over the idea that our minimum wage is as low as $6 an hour and we have the highest cost of living of any country or city in the whole world, that bothers me. I think Cayman can really come a long way as far as minimum wage, the way we treat our entry level jobs down here. Just because somebody is working in a service job or in an entry level job doesn't mean that they don't deserve to be able to pay their bills every month or you know put enough food on the table every month or have to choose between having their lights on and having their belly full. So I get pretty upset about that. Um, I actually felt the sort of effects of that coming from a retail position in Canada down to a retail position down here. I get paid significantly less down here, even when I take into consideration the exchange rate and the tax rate that I was paying in Canada. I make way less down here. If I wasn't living with family, I, it's not sustainable for me. I wouldn't be here anymore. So I don't know what people who don't have other options even do. I know there's a lot of situations down here where you have six to nine people, sometimes even more, in a two or three bedroom apartment just because the cost of living is so high and that's the only way they can make rent work. So yeah, everybody has their reasons for why they do what they do. I just wanted for all those people who were asking me questions about what about this industry, what about this job, I've been thinking about moving down here, what do you think? I just want to present some more facts for you guys when you're thinking about making that kind of decision. So that's the reality of cost of living here on the island. Obviously there are other trade-offs to that. Like you can, you can really look at all the different categories on this website, I highly recommend it. Um, but the cost of living was really the topic that I wanted to cover today. So maybe I'll go into more detail on other topics in other videos. But yes, it is a very expensive place to live. Don't kid yourself about that when you're coming to a decision about whether or not you want to live down here. But also, if you're really passionate about spending some time down here and you know that you know you have some savings, you have a plan B if things don't work out, which is something you should do no matter where you move, FYI. <laughs> but yeah, if you've got a solid plan and you want to give it a try for a year and see if it works for you and if you can make enough to make it work and still have savings, I highly recommend it. It's a pretty cool place to live, just very, very expensive. <laughs> so. There you go. That's, that's where I'm going to wrap this video up because as you can tell, I'm losing light. I'm now about to be sitting in a very dark room. My laptop is what's being my light right now. It's actually a really good light though, like laptop light. I'm not going to lie. I should do my makeup in this light. Okay, so that's all. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, I need to not use... I'm using my camera with the little side screen thing and all I can do is stare at myself. I don't know if you can tell, but this is why I like my little G9X Canon because it actually doesn't have a flippable screen, so I can't stare at myself, so I actually look at you guys. When I use the big guns, my, my like DSLR camera that does have the flip screen, I just wanna stare at myself the whole time. Like, it makes me feel like a narcissist. Am I the only one with this problem? I think maybe you have to be a narcissist to be on YouTube. <laughs> okay, well, this is getting really... Uh, this, is, this, this video is taking a turn, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna exit now. Thanks for watching, bye, see you next time.